Welcome back. With Omicron cases surging across the country, we wanted to spend some time talking about kids. Um, lots of them are vaccinated, but even more aren't. So we're going to talk about what Omicron means for children uh, with pediatric infectious diseases specialist Dr. Jacqueline Wong and Dr. Fatima Kakar. Uh, hello to the both of you. Dr. Wong, uh, I'll start with you. You know, so many kids across the country have seen their school starts delayed, right? Uh, how much have schools been driving transmission or is it just reflecting what's in the general population? Yeah, what we've seen throughout the different waves is, you know, schools uh, reflect what's going on in the community. So the data here in Ontario, the data in other parts of Canada and other countries um, consistently show that it's reflecting what's going on in the community, but not the main driver of transmission. And yet, you know, Dr. Kakar, last I checked, the, the vaccination rate for kids under 12 was quite low. Uh, what's the most common concern that you hear? And, and what do you tell those parents? I think it's twofold. I think in part, people were under the impression that kids aren't going to be very sick. So, you know, they don't need the vaccine. And then on the other hand, they were worried about not enough data. And so what I'd like to tell them is, you know, we've got over 8 million U.S. kids who've had the vaccine without any side effects. And really, kids are getting sick and getting hospitalized from COVID. So I do urge parents to get the vaccine. Since you brought up symptoms, Dr. Kukar, let's talk about those. What are the symptoms that parents should be watching for uh, in their children? So this is important because Omicron is different from the previous COVID waves that we've had. Before it was fever, maybe GI symptoms, but now it's very respiratory. So things such as congestion, cough, sore throat can be signs even without a fever. So essentially Omicron is looking like a cold in kids. And so any cold must be thought of as potential COVID. And Dr. Wong, what is the point at which, you know, one's child has developed symptoms where you think, okay, this is actually potentially something much more serious than what it is right now. I've got to go see a doctor or go to the hospital. Right. So like the advice that we would give in terms of help, keep helping parents guide, you know, when to seek um, uh, further assessment for is similar to other respiratory viruses or the flu. So, you know, there are a lot of things that can be done at home to help your kids stay comfortable, to help um, bring down the fever if they have one. Um, but if those um, interventions stop working, so if their fever stops responding to either the acetaminophen or the ibuprofen, or it becomes very difficult to maintain kind of the hydration of your child, like they're getting dehydrated or they're so sleepy or they're throwing up so much they can't keep anything down. Um, those are reasons to take them in to get seen. And of course, as Dr. Kakar mentioned, this um, current wave with the Omicron variant has a lot more focus on respiratory symptoms. So if your child is having difficulty breathing, so breathing very fast, or if you're watching them breathe without their shirt on and you're seeing their muscles are working really hard to take those breaths in um, or if you're noticing that they're pale um, or blue around the lips those are always reasons to have them seen by a doctor regardless if it's omicron or covid or another respiratory infection and and dr wong in terms of avoiding getting sick altogether you know one conversation that we've had in our own family i, I have two little girls is about masking and and whether we need to think about upgrading the kids masks where, where does the science stand on that now? Yeah, so the, the science is limited in terms of studying masks in kids. And, and granted, part of it is the variability in terms of the range, age range in kids and their ability to keep different masks on. Um, so I would still say that if parents um, would like to use masks as one of the tools, one of the layers for protecting their kids um, from getting the uh, COVID infection or other respiratory infections, you know, we still stick to um, a mask with multiple layers, making sure that the fit is good, making sure that it's comfortable for kids because at the end of the day, if it's uncomfortable, they're not going to be able to wear it. So, you know, to your question about whether we should be talking about an upgrade, I'm assuming people are referring to N95 masks, you know, those aren't designed for small little faces. Um, the comfort, the fit, it's not designed for those small kids. So it, it no longer has that benefit that people are hoping for. Um, if kids can't keep it on, if the fit is just the wrong size for them. So uh, I would stick with a cloth mask that fits well. Okay. And Dr. Kakar, I have time for one more question. Um, you know, for kids who have gotten one dose and then who are considering getting the second dose before the recommended eight-week 
interval. You know, we've had doctors on our program talk about fast-tracking the second dose, getting it as soon as three, four, you know, five weeks after the first. What do you think about that? Yeah, I've had this question a lot this week. I think the reason we chose that eight-week interval was uh, to minimize side effects and to increase the durability of the antibody response. Now, I'm not worried about safety if we're gonna shorten the dosing interval. We've got a lot of good safety data. What we lose out a little bit is the duration of the response. What I'm suggesting is I think if you're in a part of the country where you can uh, get that dose sooner, and if you have very vulnerable people in your household, multi-generational households, grandparents, then you could potentially get it at the four to six week mark, but I wouldn't go below four weeks because that's really our standard for second doses for vaccines. All right, we packed a lot of information in there uh, and a lot of good answers. Uh, Dr. Wong, Dr. Kakar, thank you so much. Thank you.